So today I wanted to talk about uh, fear. <clears throat> and fear's interesting. Um, I like fear. Um, I feel like it's really useful to have a, a rich relationship to fear. Um, I mean, I would like to be uh, experience fear less often perhaps, but for me, fear is an indication very often where there's, there's some new ground to break. And this is something that I've spoken about in a couple other talks as well. Um, I did a little modeling project with this woman who had a very interesting relationship to fear where um, in my experience at the time, when I thought about a certain new endeavor, fear would come up and, and this was like a, a thought sequence that would happen in an instant so quickly that I, it was hard for me to even notice what was happening. But I would think like, oh, you know, I'd like to go do this. And immediately, kind of unconsciously, so much fear would come up and I would go from fear into sort of overwhelm and it would just shut me down. And uh, this woman had done some very, very major things in her life and um, things that I found quite fearful. And as we were talking about how she did these things, she gave me the impression or I had the impression that she wasn't experiencing fear. And she, she explained to me, she said, um, no, I'm, I'm terrified almost all the time. And this is what I found fascinating. And I, I said, well, if you're, if you're really fearful or terrified, how do, you, how do you do these things? And she said that what would happen is when she would get fearful, she would, she would notice it. And then she would switch to a very analytical state of mind. And she would begin to break down the context of her fear, you know, she would, she would sort of mark out and say, okay, this is the situation where I'm fearful. She was very clear on the context. And then she would start to look at it analytically and uh, begin to tease out in a very rational way, um, you know, what was real, what was uh, potentially dangerous, was there anything dangerous and how to navigate uh, the situation. Now, even if very often, even if we can get to the point where we know something isn't dangerous, our body may still have a fearful reaction. But she did her best to shift to a very analytical kind of like uh, Mr. Spock uh, interaction with the situation, just looking at it uh, incredibly logically, uh, which also had the effect of calming her body down. And then she would begin to uh, build experiments or build kind of tasks for herself where she could be in that situation again and again and create a different response to what was happening. So I loved this, uh, this process of breaking something down and eventually knocking on the door of that situation again and again. And uh, I, I think of it as sort of fearscaping, like you you mark the territory and then you, you go into analysis and really break down anything that's uh, what's real and what's imagined or what's a learned internalized response. And then figuring out challenges or steps you can take to begin to reprogram or recondition your response to that situation. And even if you're just taking these tiny steps, <clears throat> you eventually can get acclimated and, and sort of uh, comf get comfortable in that context that used to generate fear for you. And uh, she was very methodical about this. So for her, fear was not a reason to stop, but it was a reason to go into this process and eventually a reason to engage in the context in such a way that she could have a different response to things. Um, so I'm very thankful that I had that conversation with her because now that's something that I do. And um, the one of the trickiest things is just to notice when we are fearful and, you know, so that we can go, oh, here's an opportunity where I can break this down and create little challenges for myself. 
so that I can engage in this um, ultimately with a different feeling response and, um, and some comfort.